Welcome to Poker World Interview. This is Kristen. In this episode, we are going to talk about the game engine in Polkadot ecosystem. If we talk about the game engine, Arjuna is the one we have to invite. So it's a great honor for us to have the founder of uh, Arjuna to be here with us today. Let's welcome. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I'm Nicholas and I'm uh, uh, the co-founder of uh, Arjuna Network. I lead the business development efforts for the team, which is located here in Switzerland. Um, Arjuna Network essentially is, is an infrastructure for decentralized gaming, uh, which is built by using the uh, technological let's say, infrastructure provided by the Polkadot uh, ecosystem. Um, our goal at the end of the day is to make sure that we can um, empower both creators and gamers um, to be able to take more control and have a louder, and a louder voice in the games that they create and the games that they love to play. Uh, so a big part of this effort that we do here at the UNA Network is making sure that we can create those technologies or sort of those uh, those bridges to those technologies which we can make the life of game studios and indie game developers easy in order for them to to sort of deploy um, you know rich on-chain um, uh, games towards the community is there any reason that why you choose polka dot to uh, is that help to uh, achieve your vision or yeah um i think i mean our, our journey started as as I think a lot of similar uh, teams in, in, in the industry by experimentation, right? We had our own game, which we're looking to develop. Um, Cedric, my co-founder, who had many years of, of working on, on sort of game engines and game logics um, uh, for gaming and sort of side projects of them. So it was quite a few years that we're trying to deploy a game on chain. You see, we always liked that idea that something can be player governed, or at least we as players um, can have a say or, or that our items um, those in-game items can be owned by us. Now, uh, by doing that experimentation, we tried a number of different solutions. Um, one interesting was, was back in 2018, we used the Dash, uh, which was a, quite an interesting, I would say, network there because of the way that it used its master nodes for governance. Uh, but the result was that, you know, as an infrastructure, it was very slow, uh, really difficult for us to run anything that had a, a meaningful user experience. Um, and it was about two years ago when uh, we stumbled upon, upon Substrate, uh, which essentially is that sort of language or that uh, uh, which runs uh, upon which, let's say, the Polkadot ecosystem is built on. And we really found that technology empowering. So uh, very soon we started working uh, towards achieving some goals there. Uh, we reached out to Web3 Foundation and received a few grants for the integration of Unity that we did uh, for the uh, for Substrate. Um, but I think the basic idea of what we'd like with Polkadot was, was um, its long-term vision, which was uh, essentially a layer zero, which allowed us to be able to create an infrastructure uh, which is dedicated for a single purpose, in our case, gaming, without having really to worry uh, about the trust and security, because that is provided by that whole, let's say, ecosystem uh, in Polkadot and Kusama. Uh, so really a technical choice, I would say, from, from our side of why to build on Polkadot. Mm, yeah. You know, the gaming industry, they are very picky about the infrastructure. And uh, <laughs> they need they need uh, the scalability and uh, a lot. Um, you know, and and Angina games are developed on uh, Unity and uh, Unreal, right? There are very these two these two engines are currently leading uh, game engine in in the game industry. And uh, uh, personally, I'm I'm not a professional <laughs> uh, one who developed the games, uh, so this is my first time heard about the Unity and the Unreal. Mm -hmm. uh, so. And uh, could you explain to us the, wh what are they and how Agena Network leveraging them to build the infrastructure for a Web3 game? Okay. Um, so what I would say of the, the, the basic environments or the most fundamental environments in which um, game studios and game developer, developers work are these uh, game engines. That's where essentially they program uh, the whole game. That, that uh, in there is where sort of you can capture uh, from the game logic up until sort of quite more complicated things that have to do with the game. So essentially it's that, uh, that, that, that basic infrastructure or working environment that they operate for the games. Now there's different engines which accomplish different things such as Unity, such as Unreal Engine, uh, and there's also more. Um, each of them, let's say, specialize in something different, or they can provide a number of different things. Uh, a good example, just to use uh, something outside of Unity and Unreal, is the Hero Engine or Meta Engine, uh, which was sort of mainly used for um, MMO RPG type of games. Now, for us, why this game engine is is really important is because um, essentially that's where in the gaming. Uh, or sort of in that in-game world where most of the governance is being captured, where most of the logic uh, is being captured. So for us, it's very important that if we want to be talking about the future of DAOs, right, of player governance, uh, unless that logic uh, is on chain, 
which means that it's not controlled by a single entity. Uh, we think that that um, is sort of a future towards we would like uh, to build towards. Uh, I saw from your uh, from the website or from Twitter that you hosted uh, a, a first play comp competition uh, on the Polkadot uh, Sub Zero conference in 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 Lisbon. Uh, one part one part about is about the competition that mm -hmm. what you achieved, and the other part is that is 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 that uh, and which games can we expect to see on Agena Network first? Mm -hmm. um, so as as. As any products, uh, games also uh, go quite through a rigorous part, let's say, of, of, of testing um, uh, with real users. Um, so this was a great opportunity for us, Sub-Zero, which is, let's say, the technical uh, conference, annual conference of uh, the Polkadot ecosystem, uh, which we had the pleasure of joining uh, last month, where we also introduced our um, Sub-Zero, uh, excuse me, our uh, Unity uh, integration. Uh, um, for Substrate, which was a really interesting workshop that Cedric gave. Uh, we also play tested uh, the Osmo Yuna avatars. Now, the Osmo Yuna avatars are, uh, let's say, a small NFT collective game. Uh, the idea is that this is a product towards game developers where uh, each season will represent a new game which is going to be launched uh, on the Yuna network. So, uh, before, let's say, the beta testing of a game uh, starts, a uh, project will be able to launch their, their season of the Osmo Yuna avatars themed obviously to their game and attract that initial community which then could that community can uh, go on and support um, the, the launch of their beta uh, for the game uh, so we were very happy to do that uh, very happy to get sort of the game into the hands of a few people uh, and as i said part of what we're going to be doing for this and uh, a bit of next month is we're going to be doing a few of these play tests uh, the next one we're going to be doing um, i think actually today with the polkadot academy uh, graduates um, and same thing for January. Again, getting the product in the hands of as many people as we can in order to test uh, sort of the user experience gives us the opportunity at this early stage to keep, um, you know, creating this loop where we build something, we take it out, people can test it, test it, we take it back in, and we iterate. Mm. Another word that needs you to explain more is is the substrate IO net to to chain. You know, because mm -hmm. I, I, I saw that you hold uh, some workshops and uh, focus on that. So what is that? What is Substrate uh, IO the two chain? And, uh... Yep, so that, that's that's our uh, essentially part of, of the tool chain uh, is our IUNA, for example, SDK for Unity. So these are those tools and those modules that we're going to be creating over uh, the coming months, uh, which are aimed towards developers to be able to deploy uh, their game um, uh, on chain. Um, so one of the big things that we wanted to take care of, as I said, was starting with the game engine. So the Unity SDK was the first thing that you're going to see. That's obviously going to keep evolving. It's already open sourced and uh, essentially means that any substrate based blockchain can now use that API to integrate uh, Unity into their product products. Um, so we are going to be continuing to do the same thing for Unreal Engine and then move on to um, um, other tools and also you will see in that same fashion as part of that tool toolkit of, of the tool chain let's say uh, different modules for its developers now these could be modules for leaderboards for multiplayer um, um, selections uh, and things like that which are going to be as I said uh, part of a set of tools which are there for um, game developers and game studios to deploy their game on a unit network Mm, okay, uh, as a infrastructure, uh, attracting developers is always one of the uh, most important jobs. So how do you attract uh, the developers? Or how, uh, let's say, how do you grow developer communities for yourself? Yes, correct. And, and that's um, definitely our biggest challenge and our biggest opportunity, I would say, for, uh, for this year. Um, um, so I would say that game studios, we have classified them, let's say right now, into two main categories. The ones that are already actively uh, working uh, in the Web3 space, whether that's um, they have a game active in development or at least they're planning towards one. And those studios which are currently not in a sort of still just observing what's going on. Um, now, from from those studios, uh, you're going to have, uh, we are more focused obviously towards the one that already have a positive tendency towards uh, the Web3 space. And specifically, we are tailored right now, tailing our solution towards those uh, smaller uh, indie studios or small to mid size uh, um, um, studios. So the approach usually towards game developers is obviously we have a value proposition uh, towards which, which we can sort of share with them. Uh, but the most success, uh, I would say up to now, we have found from uh, game specific events, whether that's uh, Gamescom, where we were able to participate, where it's a conference which is full of game developers. 
uh, we get to sort of get introduced to other games. Um, uh, a second very good source for us has been the Blockchain Game Alliance, which we have been a part of for uh, since the beginning. Uh, we're there, uh, a, lot of, a lot of like-minded people uh, like us who are building gaming projects uh, in the space uh, are open to collaborations. Uh, so that's a second very important um, also source for us. Mm, okay, and a lot of a, a lot of Web two developers is actually very interested in the Web three development, and especially they will choose game to start with to start with, and uh, to onboard the Web two players to Web three. Uh, what do you think is missing? Yeah, um, so here it's it's a bit more complicated. I would say sort of the the answer on on what is missing. Traditionally, in gaming, you will um, you will see that it, it's not um, the platform it's the game that sells so um a good example even in the past is that every year or every four years when we were eight years i don't know what it was when we'd have the introduction of a new console let's say the playstation and the xbox uh, in reality it was never those two devices that sold it was the game which was with them right whoever had the best game sold the, the more consoles it's as simple as that um so currently in the blockchain space first of all we need to have a few games which are um a lot more fun a lot more up to the standards that that people are used to to play with uh, that still uh, is not, I would say, sort of here. Um, and the second thing, in order to onboard, I would say, Web2 communities, that we need to start showing them where the value is coming from in instead of just telling them. Um, a lot of the past year has been spent by the blockchain, let's say, ecosystem shouting technical terms towards gamers like NFTs and things like that, uh, which uh, a non-fungible token, again, is a technical term. It doesn't mean anything uh, to, to a gamer, right? Sort of, you need to explain why ownership of game assets is important or how it would change, let's say, that that uh, uh, gaming experience. Um, so I think communications is a big part of it. Uh, the investment, I think, has already been done. Uh, so the past year, we've seen a massive investment uh, in gaming projects. So we should expect in the next one or two years to actually see some really, really great games um, coming out. Mm, okay. And the... Uh, mm the uh, the polka dot parachains have a lot of uh, advantages but uh, but the but generally that the the layer one of a polka dot uh, basically you know the block time is around 10 seconds yeah. and uh, it's not enough for game so some so someone choose choose the layer once uh, for example moonbeam uh, used the uh, boba from uh, uh, yeah from optis Optimism. So, mm -hmm. um, do you think that do you think Polkadot can achieve block times that are comparable to layer two solutions? If not, or what what are you gonna do? Well, I mean, for sure, it's going to get faster, right? That's sort of the technology improves. I'm not sure it necessarily needs to go any faster as a layer one. Uh, what really matters is to see how the communication between different layers, uh, L1s, L2s, and whatever is going to be also on top of that, are fast enough, those interactions, those latencies are fast enough in order to create a fluid user experience. So from our um for example, experience. So what you're going to see with AAAs, the Osama Unavata is launching next month, you're going to see a game which is going to be running uh, on-chain on Kusama, right? Uh, not, not on Polkadot right now, but it's going to be fully on-chain on L1. And you will see that the user experience is quite fluid. Now, obviously, we've designed around uh, the block time that, that exists there in order to make sure that we can, uh, it doesn't hinder the experience. Now, um, when we're looking with games, which are, let's take, for example, um, turn-based games like Hearthstone or, or you know, turn uh, things like that. Um, so for us, that's where we see, especially the blockchain, being able to create some really unique experiences in this in this genre, let's say, right now. Um, so for us, in our layer two solution, where we're using trusted execution environments, there we can achieve a latency of about um, 250 to 300 milliseconds. Um, so that's pretty fast, meaning that you can achieve between three to four interactions, gaming, let's say, interactions per second. Mm -hmm. um, so that's more than enough for the majority of games that would be turn-based. When we're talking now about, let's say, real-time games, you know, uh, first-person shooters, massive multiplayer games like that, where you need that latency to be, be between 30, let's say, and 15 milliseconds, then no, right now, Polkadot or any layer, uh, layer one for that matter, Polkadot is a layer zero, so it's a bit different, but any layer one would not be able to handle uh, a layer time, um, real-time uh, interactions. Um, so the scalability of these and the latency will probably going to be achieved through uh, layer twos, side chains, and other solutions like that. Um, and I don't see this as being really um, a performance issue of the L1s, which is going to create difficulties um, for game developers right now. Mm. What do you think of the game chain? They are in design, especially for the game. 
So there's a couple of different things from the experience that we had when we were building the game that we didn't, um, that we're trying to figure out. So um, obviously, when you look at Polygon, when you look at Ethereum, when you look at um, you know Solana, essentially these are general purpose blockchains, right? They're not for gaming, but also have a vertical, uh, let's say, integration for gaming. So for us, there were a couple of things that were important. What we mentioned before, obviously, um, speed and privacy are critical for gaming, right? We can't have a, a game in which you and I decide, let's say, to play a simple game of poker and you can see my cards. If you can see my cards, then that's a problem, right? It's never going to be a fair game. So these are the two, let's say, main things that we are um, our guiding light in terms of making sure that we have an infrastructure which is can be fast, reliable, and obviously be uh, private and confidential. Now, um, the second thing that we saw from a design point of view that didn't make a lot of sense is that when you look at Solana, when you look at Ethereum, if I launch a game and it has its own token, I'm, I'm always going to be stuck in this dual uh, token economy. I will have my own token for my game, the Nicholas token, and I will always have that Ethereum token, which I have to pay gas fees. Now, if if the Nicholas token, if the game is going is doing really well and I'm onboarding thousands of users or even millions of users, then I'm making a lot of transactions and I'm creating a lot of gas fees. Now, these gas fees, because I'm paying them in Ethereum, end up in the treasury of Ethereum. So I'm not really being rewarded for the success. So on a Yuna network, by utilizing the design essentially uh, provided by us by, by Polkadot, um, we have designed a single token economy. That means that if you have your own game, you have two choices. It either has a token, right? And if it has a token, you can use that single token both for your in-game economy and as a gas token. So um, your game, your success, your traction, your gas fees. Um, and if you do not choose to have a token, if your game is not designed with a token uh, of its own, then you can use the native token of the network, the Bayun, let's say, network. Um, for anything that has to do with your in-game economy or for accessing sort of the services uh, of the network. Mm, okay. And I'm very interested, if you are building a game on your blockchain, what what would you build? <laughs> um, so we have a game that we are actually building, which is Battle Mobs, right? Which was the game that started for us the whole journey a few years ago, which is a turn-based uh, a turn-based game. Um, so we're very excited about that. Uh, obviously, the first, as I said, the first season of, of um, the Osama Yuna Avatars is centered around uh, this game, Battlemox, for us, which will uh, will be able to have it out for people to play. Uh, we expect probably uh, beginning of Q2 or, or 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 end of let's say of Q1 that we're going to get sort of the first demo version out to play. So we're super excited about that. Um, I think one game that I would uh, type of games that we would be really interested to explore is. Um, a bit sort of these more RPG type of games, uh, sort of these more persistent sort of big worlds to see how those would hold up. Uh, personally, I'm a huge fan of first person shooters, but we don't see this right now as being a, uh, yeah, a very attractive genre for, for blockchain games, right? So the most that we can see uh, right now is for them to have um, an NFT layer or sort of something like that. Um, so yeah, not sure if, if we translate right now, very good. Uh, there are developers from Web Web three and uh, Web two. On which side? <laughs> on which side is more that comes to your your infrastructure? Uh, come to comes to your networks. Web three. I would say well, that that up to now we've um, the inbound um, requests that we're getting or sort of questions that we're getting is most people that have uh, are from the Web three space, the blockchain space, uh, that they're either interested, as you mentioned earlier, people who are interested in the technology and are looking for gaming as an application layer, um, or um, yeah, people who are getting interested in, in Substrate as a problem language, that's where we're getting a lot of developers. Uh, from our side, we're trying to reach out to a mix of both. Um, so there's uh, studios that we're currently talking to, uh, which whose games have nothing to do with Web3, right? They don't even have a plan um, um, sort of in Web3. And again, that goes back for, sorry, we're talking to developers, I mean, uh, who have no plans for their games. Um, for Web3, but it's important for us to know what they're thinking, how they're, you know, building their game, you know, how they perceive uh, this technology and how they can, um, how potentially they could integrate it to their benefit. Um, so yeah. yeah, so for Web2 developers, it's more about the way of the thinking. It's not about the language, right? Because, you know, mm, yeah, because that is correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct because it's the. I mean, uh, a big effort that that we are putting here in Ayuna, and I wouldn't say only us uh, across sort of the industry, is trying to lower the barrier for game developers. Right, making sure that those uh, environments that they work in can be maintained, making sure that anything that needs to do with 
on-chain activity that there's simple ways from a development point of view that they can um, they can they can get there. Uh, so that takes it will take its time. It's not as simple. Like it's not so the technology is not that mature yet. Um, but really, where it becomes more complicated is that for um, it's the thinking process or the design process where game developers need to start um, incorporating the technology for what it can do. Right? It's it's um, it's very easy to say, hey, let me just put an ownership an NFT layer right on top of something, or I can just say that, oh, now all I've changed is that you own this in-game item, uh, an in-game skin. Um, but that's just the surface, right? The the interesting part is what happens when they can take this. Um, technology can take these new sort of features and create a new or design a new economy around their game. I think that's what we are, uh, those moments is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, Arjuna Network has 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 just owned the Polkadot uh, parity slot. Any future plans to share and in terms of market uh, development or what else? Yeah. So uh, in terms of our roadmap, uh, we were very happy to be able to get our uh, Polkadot parachain uh, in November. Uh, that's something which we had as a goal um, to accomplish for last year, but we were not sure if we were going to have the time to do it. So we're very proud that we managed to do it. Uh, next steps for us is the, the Bayou network, which is currently live. Uh, the Osma Yuna avatars, which are going to be launching uh, next month on the Bayou network. Um, and the listing of the Bayou token, which is going to happen, I think, in the next couple of days, we're going to be listed on uh, MEXE. So a lot of the focus right now for the next year is going to be on products and games. So you should expect that there's going to be a few different seasons and a few different iterations of the Osama Yuna avatars. Um, there's going to be a few games that are going to be launched also uh, from Battlemogs and also a few from our partners, uh, 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 teams that we are already onboarding, let's say, mm. to a Yuna network. Um, and yeah, for 2023, our theme is, uh, as I said, products and games. Not a lot of, uh, probably not so many conferences uh, this year or um, mm -hmm. things like that. So heads down and, and keep building. Yeah, okay. And thank you so much. And uh, hope our community loves your project and uh, keep in touch and stay tuned.